Okay. So there we go. Yeah, so we're going to, yeah, I'm doing these, this section backwards on purpose. I want to do 3-3 three, three first, so, and then I'm going to go back to 3-2. It's because they're the same, um, they're solving the same problems, and this is the easier way, so I want to do it first. So negative, no, it's not negative. Regular x plus 6y is 25. Negative x plus 8y is 17. Yeah, it's all about solving two equations at the same time. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> How do you solve two equations at the same time? Well, the x already eliminated itself. Yeah, we just add them up. Remember this? You've had math 201. You've seen this. You just add them up, right? Just put a line, add them up. What is x? I was going to add straight up and down in the columns. What is x and negative x? Yeah, it's just gone. Zero. 6y and 8y. 14y. Good so far. Is this one 42? Everybody good to there so far? So I'm just adding up the two equations. That's why it's called the addition method, because you're adding them. It's also called elimination, because see how the x is eliminated? Okay, so now is it, it's a good, it's a very good thing that the x is eliminated, because I can't really solve when there's two letters. I want to get it down to one letter, which I now have. I just have 14y is 42. So what do you do to, to finish solving that? Yeah, just divide by the 14, and y is that 3? Yeah, 3. Y is 3. Now, that's half the battle. We don't have x yet. It's more than half the battle. How do we get x once we've got y? Yeah, bring this over. Plug in y is 3. Where do you plug in? Really, anywhere you want. Whichever one. Yeah, either one. It'll work the same, either one. I'll just grab the first one. X plus 6Y is 25. Plug in the 3. X plus 6 times 3 is 25. X plus 18 is 25. Subtract 18. X is 7. Oh, well, we're done. Now, the final answer, they want both numbers. So they want 7, comma 3, which is X and Y. 7, comma 3. They want, they want parentheses, comma, that whole thing. So there we go. 7, comma, 3. Questions I can answer on that one. Hey, uh, Seth, what, what does it mean to say the answer is 7, 3? It means if you went back and you put, remember this is, yeah, it says right there, X and Y. If you put 7 in for X in both spots and 3 in for Y in both spots, it'd make them both true. Right? If you worked it out, 7 plus 6 times 3 is 18. 7 plus 18, 25, yeah. Negative 7, right, because there was a negative sign in that formula. Negative 7 plus 24 is 17. It makes both equations true. 7, 3 are the x, y numbers that make both equations true at the same time. That's what you're finding, the numbers that make them both true at the same time. All right. Okay, so 4x plus 3y is minus 10. 7x minus 3y is minus 34. Try that one. Add them up. Straight up and down. Uh, you just take a little time. <clears throat> That's easy. I know. They'll get harder in a minute. No. So add them up. So this time the Y's will cancel, right? Mm -hmm. Y's will drop out. You have just X. So the y's drop out, get 11x is minus 44. Get x alone, divide by 11. x is minus 4. Did y'all get that okay? x is minus 4. Now plug that in.
You good to there? Mm -hmm. So far so good. Just plug it in. X is minus 4 right there. And you can plug in the second equation. doesn't matter. Got to get Y alone. So add 16 to both sides. We get 3Y is what's that? 6. Bring it up here. 3Y is 6. Last step. Divided by 3. Y is 2. So the answer is negative 4, comma 2. That's X, comma Y, right? And we're done. Is that good? We okay, they're going to get harder now. So I want to make sure we're all good there. Is that good? Yeah? Um, when is it there are infinitely many things? Oh, you're talking about that. Well, yeah, it's when you get like 0, 0, 0 for everything. Everybody drops. I'll write it all up in a minute, but yeah, 0, 0, 0. Um, okay, so here on number 3. We have five x plus five y is minus seven. Seven x minus three y is seventeen. Yeah. Now, on the last couple of problems, I just added them right away, and something dropped out. That won't happen here. Or watch me do it. Don't don't write it down. This won't work. If I just add them right now, what, what's going to happen? You get twelve x, and then five y minus three y. That'd be what two y, and that'd be seventeen minus seven ten. That didn't work. So what do I mean that didn't work? I added them. What didn't work? Didn't Nothing canceled. Yeah, see, look back. See, when we, see how these guys canceled? Because they were both the same number, yeah. 3. One was positive 3, one was negative 3. That made them zero out when you added them. Here, same thing. Positive x, negative x. They became zero, canceled out when I added them. Those were artificially easy problems, number 1 and number 2. They were setting them up for you already with opposite numbers, on X's or Y's. So this one, not so. So you're not really ready to add them yet because you, you, you really need one of the letters to drop out. We can't handle both, both letters at the same time. We need somebody to go away. We need one of the letters to eliminate. So it doesn't matter. You can do X, you can do Y. How about we just do Y's on this one? So, and the reason I chose Y is because one, one of them's already positive, one of them's already negative. So what am I going to do? I want to make both those y's be the same number, one of them positive, one of them negative. How am I going to do that? What could you do to 5 and to 3, multiplying them by other numbers, to make them both into the same thing? Make them both into 15, right? Multiply them by the other guy. So multiply the 5 by the 3 and the 3 by the 5, right? So that makes sense? That's... One good way. So when you're, what you do, so let me say that again. When you're looking at these guys thinking, all right, I need to make those guys opposites. Same number, one positive, one negative. What do you do? Just multiply by what the other guy has. So I'll take the top equation. I'm going to say, all right, multiply through the top by 3. And multiply through the bottom by 5. It's legal to do. I'm doing the same thing to both sides of the equations. So I'm not changing anything. Right? Doing the same thing to both sides of the equation is legal. So 15x plus 15y is minus 21. The second equation will become 35x minus 15y is, what's that, 85? Like that. See how now, now I'll add them and the y's will drop out. Everybody see what happened? I made the y's be the same number. Actually, opposites, right? One positive, one negative, the same number. So now when I add them, it's bye bye y's. They're going to eliminate. I made it that way on purpose. So now can you do the rest of the problem? Add up the x's. Is so that 50x? And this is just 64. Oh, that's ugly. So we're going to get a fraction. Okay, I'll show you another trick. We can avoid fractions. Well, let's keep going, though. So 50x equals 64. Well, I'll need to go with there. I'm going to come down here. So 50x equals 64. Last step to uh, get x alone. Divide by 50. Reduce that fraction. X is, what is that, 32 25ths? Mm -hmm. So we got X. We're halfway there. Good so far? 
Everybody see what we did? I purposely, the, the Y's were not the same in the beginning. I multiplied them by the other Y number to make them both be the same number. One positive, one negative. All right. Now, I've got X. I've got X. What do I normally do at this point? Once I get my first answer, what do I normally do? Plug it in. But I don't want to plug that in. I mean, you could. If you're really comfortable with fractions, feel free. You could do that. But there's an easier way. Instead, so when, when the first answer is a fraction, restart. In other words, go back to the B. It'd be easier, actually. Rather than plugging in that messy fraction and dealing with a bunch of fractions and common denominators and all that, it'll be easier to just go back to the beginning of the problem, restart. What we did is good. Gave, gave me one of the answers. But this time, make the X's cancel instead of the Y's. And you'll get the other answer you need, and you'll never have to touch a fraction. That's, that's my suggestion. But if you really want to plug in that fraction, go ahead. You could just plug it in, and it'll, it'll work. It's just a lot of work. So instead, I'm going to restart. Does that make sense? I'm going to go back to the beginning, and instead of making the Y's become the same number, one positive, one negative, I'm going to make the X's become the same number, one positive, one negative. I'm going to multiply by the other X number. Right? Let's do it. So I'm going to go by. I'm going to read. Everybody got this copy down? I'm going to restart now. So coming back here again, same question. Let's do part two. 5x plus 5y is minus 7. 7x minus 3y is 17. So this time I'm going to get the x's. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply by the other x. Oh, and I need to make one of them negative, right? Because you've got to make... So I'm going to do the top one by negative 7, negative 7, negative 7. The bottom by positive 5, positive 5, positive 5. Everybody see what I'm doing first off. I've got to. I got to make those x's be the same number. So, where does that, where does that land me? They're both going to be thirty fives. Bye bye x's. Everybody see what happened there? See what I did? I multiplied, I did the x's this time instead of the y's on my restart. Is that good? Yeah, the answer will be a fraction, but I never have to deal with fractions. I never have to get a common denominator, cancel fractions. Yeah, the final answer will be a fraction. But I never have to mess around with fractions to get there. Yeah. Good. Does everybody see what I did? So I just restarted. See, this last time, I made the y's the same number. One positive, one negative. This time, I made the x's the same number. One positive, one negative. By multiplying by the other number. But I had to make one of them negative. So what do I get? This is minus 50y, right? This is 120, 134. We got minus 50y is 134. Last step, as you know, divide by minus 50. I got to reduce that, don't I? So this is all I, all the fraction work I have to do is just reduce. Is that 57? No, 67? 120 and 14, yeah. And minus 25. All right. So there it is. What's the final answer? The whole story. X. I don't know what was X. 32 25ths, okay. 32 25ths, and the y is 67 25ths negative. Doesn't matter where you put that negative. There it is. We never had to mess with fractions. And we got the fraction. That's pretty much always my plan is avoid fractions when possible. Kind of easy. A fair bit of steps. Questions I can answer. Does that make sense? If that first answer had just been a nice, clean, whole number, like four or something, I would have just plugged it in. You know, I wouldn't have done a restart. Does that make sense? You only do the restart if the first answer is a fraction. 
So you don't want to because you don't want to plug a fraction in. So you just restart and get the other letter to cancel. That way you don't have to mess with fractions. All right. That would be a ton of work because they're ugly fractions. All right. We will just be confident we got it. So I'm going to make this X and Y. I don't like R and S because my S's look like fives and stuff. So I'm just going to use X and Y. It doesn't matter. You know, it won't change the answer. Okay. So there we go. So same thing. I mean, I, I don't know if the answer is fractions or not, but why don't we do Y's first? Just so we're all on the same page, how about we get rid of the Y's first? So multiply by the other number, right? The reason I chose the Y's is it already got one positive and one negative. I don't got to mess with sign. It's already good. Multiply through the top equation by 5. Bottom equation by 2, right? We'll make both those y's become 10. One's a negative 10, the other's a positive. Five x minus ten y one fifteen twelve one seventy five four x plus ten y eighty six good. These guys cancel. Is that two six one? That's an ugly fraction. Oh, is it? Oh. Right. Just a nice clean nine, huh? Oh, all right. So yeah, so I would just plug that one in. Don't do a restart, right? We got a nice clean number. Just plug it in. Anywhere you want. First question, second equation, doesn't matter. Five times nine, what's that? Forty-five minus two was thirty-five. Subtract forty-five from both. Minus two was minus ten. Y is positive. I write two names make positive. So the answer is 9 comma 5. X comma Y. Good? Not making good sense? Questions I can answer? Just a couple more things. All right, type 2. So let's see. So we have 5... Halves x, this is an awful one, plus 5 thirds y is 25, and 1 fourth x plus 1 third y is 4, okay. This is, uh, 
we got to we got to get rid of those fractions, right? That's what we do whenever we got fractions. In the beginning, I mean, if there's a fractions in the beginning of the problem, we just get them out of there. Right? And that's what we're going to do here. So, for the top equation, this one. What's the common denominator going to be? Be six, huh? Because two and three? You with me? Ajane was very confident. Six. Two and three. Two times three is six. Six is the common denominator, right? Six is it. Yeah. So multiply through by six. 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 Uh, right, now, right now, I'm just trying to get rid of fractions. I'm not trying to do opposites or any of that kind of stuff. I'm just thinking, I hate fractions. Let's get them out of there, right? So... 2 goes into 6, 3 times. Remember what you do, you cross-cancel, multiply the leftovers. 3 times 5, 15x. So far, so good. Ready for the middle one? 3 into 6, 2 times, 2 times 5, 10y. Good, good. And then the last one, just multiplies. 6 times 25, it's 150, yeah. Right, well, why is there no canceling out here? Well, these are both numer these are both just whole numbers. They're not, there's no denominators to cancel there. Right, over here they cancel denominators, right? Okay, so that's good. Now, what about the second equation? What are we going to use for the second equation? Common denominator is 12, isn't it? Because 3 and 4. So you multiply through by 12. All the way, it's, it's, as long as you do both sides, it's okay, right? I'm, I'm doing the both sides of the equal sign. So 4 goes into 12, times. 3 times, 3x. Three, 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 3 goes into 12, 4 times, and 4 times 12, 48. Much nicer. No more fractions. Is that good? Okay. So now, it's like, it, and we just kind of go from here now. Now, looking at those two, in fact, let me, just, let me just bring them over here. So we just pretend like that's the problem, like we never even saw that other stuff. This is the one we're going to solve now. So, all right, now we get back to business as usual. We say, okay, we got to make opposites. We gotta make opposites. Now, if you notice, sometimes sometimes we make the x's opposites. Sometimes we make the y's opposites. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Well, this one I would turn to the bottom one if I wanted. Yeah, this one. Do you see that the x's would be easier to deal with than the y's? Mm -hmm. Do you see that we could do the x's by only multiplying one equation? What am I talking about? So, you remember the name of the game? Everybody, everybody, good to hear. We're trying to make the two x's or the two y's, doesn't matter, pick your favorite, make them be the same number, one positive, one negative, so they'll eliminate when we add them up, right? That's the name of the game, name of the method, elimination, when you add, addition. So, so I could multiply that bottom three by negative five, couldn't I? Negative five times that three would make negative 15, and I wouldn't even need to multiply the top by anything. I could just do the bottom equation. That's okay to do. You don't have to do both equations all the time. You could just do the bottom one. Now, you could do the y's if you prefer. You can multiply the top one by like 4 or negative 4, the bottom one by 10, make them both 40, and, and make one of them a negative 4. You have to make one of them negative, right? That didn't work too. It's just a little more work. You'd have to mess with both equations. So I'm just going to do the bottom one by negative 5. Are we good? Is that making sense? My 5s don't look very good at all. Okay, so then, now the top equation hasn't changed. I'm going to just write that. Hasn't, I didn't do anything to the top equation, but the bottom equation has changed. It's minus 15x, minus 20y, minus 240. Is that good? Now when you add them up, x is canceled. Hoping something nice will happen here. I think it will. It's going to be a nice answer. Minus 10y. Is that minus 90? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 
It is not. We get to there? So far? Yeah, can you tell? That's only y. So minus 10y is minus 90. Last step to get y alone. Divide by minus 10. y is 9. Yeah, we've got y now. It's a nice whole number, so I'm not going to do any restart stuff. Right? I'm just going to plug it in. Now. Remember, I've said a couple times, you guys never forget anything I say, right? I talk at you for two hours a day. Do you remember I said you can plug anywhere you want? It, anywhere. Really, I mean anywhere. You can literally plug anywhere, any of those. Any of the Y? Yeah, any of the Y. Yeah, I mean, yeah, any, yeah, any of the nine. Yes, no, and, and, in this, yeah, and in this problem, any Y you want, plug in that nine. Now, therefore, I'm not going to go back to those fractions. I'm never going back. <laughs> to those fractions, right? I'm going to plug into one of these guys, right? Or these guys. It doesn't matter. This, these guys are probably simpler. Just any of those you want. Don't go back to I mean, the fractions would work, but it'd be painful. Go back to one of these. So it doesn't matter. Pick whichever one you want. I'm kind of running out of room here. So I'm going to get these fractions out of here. Yeah, we're never going back to the original fractions. So I just say, okay, okay. I'm going to plug in y equals 9. Where am I going to plug it in? Probably this one or the other one. It doesn't matter. 15x plus 10y is 150. Plug in the 9 right there. 15x plus 10 times 9 is 150. 15x plus 90 is 150. There we go. Subtract 90. So we've got 15x is 60. Yep. Get rid of this. So, everybody see the last step? Last step. 15x is 60. Divide by 15x is 4. We got it. And we never messed with fractions. We got rid of them in step 1 and never went back to them. Oh, look at the time. No, three more good minutes to use. <laughs> you want to get all your money's worth out of this class. All right. So we good? Oh, there's something else I got to show you. So that's good. <laughs> but I need to show you so you know what to do when you see them. Yes, exactly. Uh, number six, it will be B. It'll be number. It'll be B on your number six as well. Yeah, yeah. The the answer won't change. The question. I'll change the numbers. All right. So let's just do the normal thing. It looks normal enough in the beginning and. We're just thinking, okay, we need to make the x's opposites or the y's opposites or whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead and multiply by something to make somebody opposites. Do x's or y's. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I can already see the problem. Zero does not equal four. No, zero equals zero, though. So, so I'm, for example, I'll look at the x's. What could I do to make both those x's become the same number, one positive, one negative? negative. Multiply two through by negative 2, right? Because I'd make that negative 4x and positive 4x. Mm -hmm. Or you could do the y's. In fact, I am doing the y's, and I didn't even plan to. Right? It's going to make that negative 6y. It's going to get rid of both of them at the same time, and I didn't even try to do that. And look at the right side. What do you add them up? Gone, gone, gone. Zero, zero, zero. That means infinite. So that's when you get infinite. Anybody know what, it, what happens when you get no solution? Because sometimes that can happen. Zero does not equal the number. Yeah. Zero plus zero equals a number where that number is not zero. That's no solution. Because it's not true. Like you get something like zero plus zero equals seven or something. That's not true. No solution. This is true. That means there's infinite answers. I don't have time to talk about that anymore. Even more than your money's worth, maybe. It'll be up on YouTube, right? All right, let's do this one, and we'll end with this one. Let me make sure I show you about moving things around. Okay, so this will be our last one. Yeah, because we have three sections next time. Yeah. All right, so um, here we go. I'm going to distribute that right in the beginning. 3a minus 3b is 12. And the second equation, do you see how the b is on the wrong side? 
Just jump it over. What happens when something jumps over the equal sign? Negative. Changes signs, yeah. 4A minus B is 12. Then I'll just go dot, dot, dot. I just, you just got to line things up first on that one. Do you see that? Now it's regular. Now you would just, I don't know what you want to do. You can make both these 12, multiply, or you can make this positive 3B. Probably easier. Anyway, do whatever you want. Does that make sense from there on that one? Is that good? All right, so what did we finish? We did some good stuff. We finished. What did we finish? 2, 5, 2, 6, and 3, 3. All those due on Wednesday at class time, 1 p.m. All right, guys, three sections. Have a big day. Have a good day. Oh, I did. Look at that. I was going too fast. Thank you. That's just be two. You're right. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, who was going to? Abraham. Yeah. What's this? Okay. Gotcha. Question though for the um, exam. Uh -huh. um, you know how you said that you have a practice exam, right? Right. So then how am I going to do that with my last question? Um, are not smaller when I do things like that? So, like, how am I going to. Well, the practice exam isn't for a grade. Yeah, I know, but it's just like, how, how can um, everybody, like, that would be done, but like, I'd probably do like half of it because I. Gotcha. Not everybody will be done. Yeah, a lot of people won't finish. You just do the best you can. It's just a practice exam, and I'll just run it through. It's not it doesn't affect your grade at all. And I'll just give it back to you right away. Yeah. So don't worry about practice exam. Uh, okay. And then for the uh, September sixth, I already scheduled for the exam. So okay. I would just go over there. That's right. Yeah. Well, the way it'll work actually is um, you want to come to the first half though, because I am gonna on, on test. see how I. I lecture for the beginning. So you do want to be here the first hour. So from, from 1 to 2, you do want to be here. Because I'm going to lecture. So you can change your appointment. There's plenty of time. I'm going to lecture for the first hour. And then I'll say, okay, now it's test time. And then you can go over there and do the test. So you want to schedule it like after 2 on test day. Oh, or 2 o'clock like would be fine. More of a, I have it earlier rather than like coming later. Oh, you're taking it earlier? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, as long as you can be in class between uh, 1 and 2. If you can take it earlier, that'd be fine. So I was thinking to do it at, like, around, because I wasn't sure, because I thought, I wasn't sure what time this um, exam would be. So I didn't know if, um, how long were you going to let them do the exam for? Um, well, all that... Um, oh, I see, because you, right, 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 um, and you get, to, yeah, so they're going to get probably an hour and a half, so, yes, yeah, so you'll need 2.15, so what time did you schedule to start for? I put, um, I thought, because right here, like, in this class, it's two hours and 15 minutes, so I just, just in case, I put, like, 14 minutes, um, so yeah, what, what 40, I'm asking is, what, what time are you starting? I at? started at... Uh, I put 12. Yeah, that's going to run into this class. I mean, you can do whatever you want, oh. but if you do that, you're going to miss some lectures. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so you do whatever you want. You know, okay. you're a college student, so do whatever you want, but I'll start with a clicker quiz. You'll miss that and you'll miss some lectures. And yeah, so you want to set up your appointment so you can be here at 1 o'clock. Oh, okay. You know, because from 1 to 2, I will do some, I'll do a clicker quiz and I'll do some lectures. Yeah, so you might want to make that appointment earlier if you can, if you have time in your schedule, or take it after the test. Oh, okay. But then, um, but then if, like, let's say I do it before, and then I do come come in afterwards when they're doing the test. You just take off, go home, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, for the clicker, oh, I have a question. Are those, like, um, quizzes or something? They're going to be quizzes, yeah. So We're going to start an in-class with a little multiple-choice quiz. So then, um, for me, I'm, like, slower, so then how would that yeah, we don't we don't do anything different for quizzes. It's oh, just for the tests. Oh, okay. On that, yes. Oh, okay. Then. Quizzes, you can use your open notes and everything. Oh, okay, okay. Then. Yeah. So this is your, this one's yours to keep, and and I keep this oh, one. Yeah. yeah, I got I got this one here. 
All right, sounds good, Claudia. Yeah. Just, yeah, okay. Yeah. That's it. That's all good. Thank you. And Three by five card. Yeah, I'll put that on your. No, the no, the chasers. Yeah, no chasers. Right, right. I'll announce that. I'll announce that next time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. I don't it, even know. Like, I'm not, I just. And Abraham, write down like. Some just a second. Um, so Victoria, Victoria. This is Abraham. Abraham Victoria. Okay. So um, you have done this before, Abraham? No. Okay. So the way this will work is you um, just take this page, put your name down, your into your note taker. So put your name down and your signature and your email. Mm -hmm. And then if you could run this over to the DSPS office. You can fill it out there if you want. I don't know where that's at. That's by the small fountain. I'll yeah, show you. Should show you where it's. And, and the reason is because you turn this in, they'll give you priority registration for next semester. Maybe you already have that as yeah. military. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but anyway, so yeah, so, um, so that's no big event. But they'll also give you the, the paper, the special copy paper. Oh, but you like keeping it in your notebook there, huh? Yeah. Um, I can just like. They said that you can take it in and they'll scan it for you. Yeah. Oh, great. Copy. Yeah, because I. That's what I'm going to start doing because I make too many marks. Like I keep erasing. So yeah. this paper is just going to work. No, no, it's not. I'd rather. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. so, so, but, so you have to go by their office every day? Mm -hmm. And they'll make copies uh, for my person who isn't here today. All right, <laughs> that's good. Okay. Um, yeah, so, okay, that's a lot of work. So you got to run by there every day, huh? Mm -hmm. And it's. I don't mind as long as, I mean, my notes are pretty much what he copies down. Like, there's some other stuff that are, that is highlighted or whatnot, but. Uh, like, you don't have to, like, go by there every day. You just send me a picture if you want. Oh, okay. Of the notes. That's fine with me, too. Yeah, just get, yeah. give her text and just yeah. send the picture. Okay. That would be easier, huh? Yeah. yeah. And they'll all be, you know, all my notes will be on YouTube. I mean, all the lectures will be on YouTube. I need mean, all the help, so it's okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, sounds good. All right, well, thank you, Abraham. For that, yeah, if you could just turn yeah, that in. And, okay. Sign and then I take one. And then you can just ship her the notes too. You just you know how to take pictures with your camera and just ship the notes. All right, Mr. Thank Great, you. thanks. Thanks for doing that, Abraham. No problem. This is actually for me. Um, it's just uh, extended testing time. Okay. Uh huh. Um, he put on there double time, so I think they go over there to the yeah. Right. They have special they do, they do. You, you know, so on testing days, I always, you hear me tell that other young lady, we start with lecture. So just, just be here the first, I don't know, half an hour, 40 minutes on test day, and then I'll say, all right, it's time to take our test now, and you would just take off, and either you did it earlier in the day or later in the day, whenever okay. your appointment is with okay. the SPS. But, so, but just make sure you can be here the first, like, 45 minutes, because okay. I will do a lecture on a new topic. All right. Uh, sounds good. I'm going to take this paper back. I don't want I that way. Way too much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome.